I'm trying this at a different time, but it doesn't look like it's going to be any good. It's about half past ten on Sunday morning over here in the UK. And I'm just checking to see if I can get any live viewers, because I was going to do something I thought was interesting. <laughs> and I'm talking to myself now. I've got no viewers. But you never know. Oh, we've got one viewer. Hello, you're very welcome to Paris. We live chat on a Sunday morning. Two people. My goodness, that's great. I thought I was going to be on my own there for a while. It's amazing how long one minute is. Three people. Oh, it's got up great. Good, good morning. You're very welcome. It's wee Patty here. And uh, all I'm doing is, well, I'm not going to go into it. I will wait and see if we can get, once we get up to about 10, hopefully. Well, if we get 10, we might get there. But I'm, I'm sorting out my fixed blades for the summer. Uh, I keep I keep some up here and then I'll take a stack down to the a stack. I'll take the other half down to the caravan. But I'm open to a chat about anything at all. It's an open mic morning. I just thought it would give me something to do. Jason, good morning. You're very welcome. Chris, good morning. 2 30 a.m. in the morning there in the US. Well, my goodness, you're up late, big fella. I don't normally do them at this time here, but I just thought I'd give it a, I'd give it a wee try and see how many people turn up. I'm actually I'm genuinely sorting this out for for going to the caravan, just sorting knives out. And I thought I would let you see what my thought process would be. Here is the box. Ugh, there's the box of knives that I'm trying to sort out. And I, I, look, this is open to any. Sunny but windy here in Spain. Well, it was windy overnight here, but it's lovely and sunny out this morning, I'll have to say. Did you get any of that big storm come through your way? That's Chris in Spain, by the way. <laughs> We're up to six, seven. My goodness, now it's going. Now it's starting to move. Let's sort this out. Yeah, well, we got a bit of it, but not as bad as what they, they said it was going to be, to be honest with you. Nine people. Okay, what I'm doing, what I'm, while we're chatting here, but please talk about anything. Um, I'm just trying to sort my knives out for down the caravan for over the summer. Because I do like to go down to the beach and have wee fires and, you know, light bonfires with the kids. Good morning, Reno. How you doing, sir? Um, so I'm just going to go through the knives that I've got here that I'm going to take down. To start with, I have this one. This is one that stays here. Now, let me just see. I have another wee brother for it somewhere. Where is it? Oh, there we are. These are two beautiful little um, LT right knives that I've got. I keep this one here. This bit up here sometimes, if I'm just going down to the woods for a walk with a dog or whatever, I would take this wee knife with me. It's an LT right, and this is another LT right. Um, Dave. Um, Dave's Knives, uh, Dave Dunkey, good morning all. I hope you got my message I sent you back. You never replied. Um, reference the wee clone knives. Check your check your emails or check the, you'd, answer, you'd ask me in, um, in some video, the last video I'd done. But, so these two, so I'll keep this one here. This is the one that sits on the top of my desk and I'll use it to open packages or anything. But if I'm going out and I'm just going down the woods and I want a wee fixed blade with me, I'll take this absolute LT right make some beautiful knives. But I think especially as little small ones, I took the sheath off this because this one goes in my pocket. Because as you know, over here in Northern Ireland, we're not allowed to carry fixed blades. Unless there's a reason. And going to the woods, believe it or not, is a reason. Uh, so there's the first one that I'm going to take down the caravan. Um, I've actually only just brought this up for the caravan. But you can see this was, uh, where is it? These knives. There we go. These knives. He had done this and he had done this one. Now, any questions from anybody there? The second one. Here's another one. Um, here's another really cheap one. Would you believe that this is a Rough Rider knife? And it comes in this sheath and it costs about £16 or something like that, maybe £20. But I just think this is, I, I love this wee knife. Watch this. Look at that for a skinner. 
and it weighs it's nearly like a marble hand look at the handle on that and this is rough rider <laughs> for for about 20 dollars say look at that skinner blade on that and she's as sharp as a, a a razor absolutely in hand it is so comfortable great handle just so secure i'm not sure what this material is whether it's just hard plastic but it's a solid piece of uh, 440a absolutely love it so i'm going to take that down the caravan and see what use i can get out of that that's a caravan now here is the the other knife that i'm i don't know whether to take it down the caravan this was my bushcraft knife we've got the ferro rod in it and it's just a mora uh, and if you do any bushcraft at all mora is just an amazing knife look I've had this knife for donkey's years. This knife has been put through. That's not dirt. That's just wear. It has been put through. It's the most comfortable handle. This was the bushcraft. What was this knife? This was. I don't remember what make it was. It's gone out of my head. But I just love more knives. This uh, is just absolutely Sunday school for knife nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, I'm here for a life. Hello there, Al. How you doing? Uh, this this knife, honestly, has been through hell and back with me. I have baton logs with it. Good morning, the knife beater. How are you? From Brissa. I haven't had a Brissa knife yet. But I think I'm actually going to take this one maybe down the caravan um, because I'm taking the likes of my firebox and all down so that I can have um, barbecues down the beach. I was going to say, Jay, it is uh, early in the morning there. For you. Um, and if you want to see any of these again, just let me know. Now, here's another old knife that I have. This is when I used to go trout fishing. I know it's a bit big, but I was given it as a as a present. And it's just a big fillet knife. <laughs> it's, uh, what's the make on this one? Blade Master. It's made in Japan. But, I mean, it's a really nice big fillet knife. Comes in a nice big sheath. Um, when I was trout fishing, I took this. When I was rainbow trout fishing, I should say, not just brown trout. But it was a great wee knife to take. Um, and I'm actually going to try and start rainbow trout fishing again. We have a reservoir up here that's just been converted to a fishing lake. So I might actually do a video from up there. I'm not sure what you meant, me, Dom. I have one of the, the clone knives that you wanted up here, the bug out. If you want it, um, it's sitting here. Give me a shout later on um, and we'll sort that out for you. Got to go. Have a good cheers, Chris. You take care of yourself. Have a good day. Have a good day. So I think I'll maybe leave this one here. And if anybody would be interested in that, I was thinking of going trout fishing and maybe taking, my, uh, taking the camera up and, you know, watching a show on a catch or whatever. I don't know whether it's any interest at all, but you never know. It's something different. Now, so that's not going down the caravan. Here's one that definitely is staying up here. This is my bushcraft hatchet. <laughs> now, S -S Sally, my, my long beloved wife, long before I was in the knives, um, when I went bushcraft, and I used to disappear by myself. It was a great one for, um, just disappeared off into the woods for a night, taking a hammock and hanging it in the woods, and that would have been it. I took this from our kitchen. We have, we used to have a motorhome years ago and we'd bought expensive stuff. This is one of the expensive things we'd bought for the motorhome. Now, this is, I, it really doesn't show on camera, but this has been blunt and sharp and so many things. This is my hatchet I took into the woods and split wood with for fires. This was better than any other small X I ever had. And to show you the thickness of the blade, it's probably about five mil thick. But it is an absolute beast at preferring wood for a fire. Absolutely beautiful. So that will stay here because, as you know, and uh, you've been so generous, I'm going to be doing that in the next couple of weeks, building a hobo shelter. Um, but I'll probably just take this down to do my firewood. So there we go. That's going to stay here too. Now, here's a great big scary knife. Look at that there. This is the sort of thing that I used to buy before I had a channel. When I used to see things on AliExpress. 
<laughs> Look at this wee thing. Isn't that the toadiest wee? It, it says it's D2. Look, it's sharp enough. I, I don't know whether it's D2. It's maybe, it's all right. Let's put it like that. It cuts all right. But it's not something I've ever used. But I just bought it for the sake of it. I'll probably throw that in the giveaway soon. I'll maybe do a wee fixed blade giveaway or something like that. But I just thought it was dinky. I Look, I have bought so much crap. And I'm trying to think of a nice word, but crap is right. I had so many knives that I bought from AliExpress in the beginning when I first got into knives. <laughs> that I'm, I really need to get rid of them. What I'm going to do, there's going to be, in fact, that I might just do that as a wee giveaway. This is another wee knife that I got from when when Gearbest were sponsoring me. This is a wee knife that they had. This is a, oh, it doesn't tell you there. Yes, it's a San Ramu fixed blade. A wee San Ramu fixed blade. Beautiful little knife. Thin, but you actually do get a good grip on it. And it comes with a wee Kydex sheath. Where are we? Let's get the in here. There. Listen to that retention. That's pretty good, doesn't rattle, but it's puts on you can carry it side carry. It's a lovely little thing. Um I think that and that I think I'll do a wee and get rid of them because I'm not using them, but I'll do a wee giveaway um next week with those. I'll do a wee giveaway with them. Now what else have we got? Here's a here's an old knife that I used. This was my first expensive knife. It didn't bring me into the knife community, but it was a knife that I used over and over again. Um, and it's a big buck. It's the big buck with the, I can never remember the numbers on these things. Yeah, they seem to be sand removed because they made just good knives, especially their small knives. I still have a stack of their small knives. When I was trout fishing, I would have used this up and down the riverbank just to cut branches or whatever out of the way when you were going up with streams. Really chunky big blade. Chunky big knife. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Is there any other fishermen amongst you there that can feel my pain? Look how far that's come across there. But I mean, this was dear. When I bought this, it was about... A Sally bought me it um, very on, early on in our relationship and... She bought, I think it was about £60. I know it was dear. It was really more than I'd ever thought I would ever pay for a knife. But you can still see if half of the trout that I caught are still in this knife. But it was a great wee belt sheath. Um, lovely little knife. A big knife, I should say. So I think that will probably go down the caravan. I'll take that one down the caravan. I'm sticking these to the side. Here's, a, <laughs> here's another old knife. This is my box of old knives that I used. No, um, Reno, I haven't been for a couple of years. Um, I used to be an avid fisherman. You know, I used to go and sit at river, just walk up and down a river all day long for brine trout. That was my favourite. The, um, uh, the other fishing, reservoir fishing and that. I liked it when we used to go as a crowd. We used to finish work. I was a taxi driver and we used to go fishing after work and would take a barbecue, you know the wee disposable barbecues, maybe three or four of us. And it was more the crack than it was for the fishing in the lake, but it was, I enjoyed the crack. And I sort of miss that now. This is, I don't know, it's, it's a no name make. I got this in a, an old junkyard shop. I think I paid about five pound for it for some reason, but it's solid enough. It, it you know, it's a bit of movement, nothing up and down, a wee bit side to side. Only do sea fishing, Dave. I, you know, I'm an ex sailor, but I was never, I never really get into sea fishing at all. I think I, I like to have something to do. Fly fishing kept me going and constantly changing and trying to catch the fish. So I enjoyed the fly fishing. That's the sort of thing I'll just take down a caravan. And if one of the kids want a knife to play with, I'll give them this to, to hammer about with. Now, what up? here? here's one of my favourite ones, and this was given to me as a present. I only had done baby made carp fishing. <laughs> hours and hours at the riverbank. This was Jason Guthrie, a knife that he gave me. He had modded and made this from another knife. Look at that. Isn't that just beautiful? He really done a wonderful job on it. Really did a lovely job. It's small, but look at the thickness of this that he's got in the back of it. So I get a full four fingers. 
And for chopping, it's just a wee gem. It's just one that will never leave my collection. It's just beautiful. And you can obviously change these about to put it side carry. I would have thought. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Oh, no, maybe you can't. Well, we'll, we'll soon see. It goes in my belt anyway, because it doesn't take up that much room in the side of your belt. But a beautiful knife. I'll take that down the caravan, actually. I've used that down the caravan more than I have up here. Now, here's my little treasure. For those of you who like Mora, look at that baby. This is one of the oldest knives I have, you know, as in a fixed blade knife. This was my daughter-in-law's grandfather's. Um, and she found it in the garage after he passed away. She was sorting the garage out. And she found this in it. Now, if you go back in my channel, and it's a right while back, probably well over a year ago. She gave me this, and it was in an awful state. It was rusted. It was just not neglected. It had been lying in the garage for years. There's the Mora sign, the old Mora sign. And uh, i done this up myself and re-edged. It was just, honestly, it was like a, a sawtooth blade that I had uh, I'd done this all up and it has now got an edge on that would cut you in in half but even the old sheath I love the old sheath love the look of this knife now I'll probably never use it it's probably something that's just going to keep and I'm what I had promised hello Jeff how you doing um I'm probably gonna I'd said to her that I'll keep hold of this knife and I'll have it in my wee collection but her eldest boy, when he comes 18, I'm going to give it to him because it was his grandfather's knife. And hopefully he'll have the, the wherewithal. It looks like, yeah, it's a sort of, I suppose it does, um, rather than a mora. But it's it's just, a, even the old sheath, look at that old badge, the old mora badge. It's just beautiful. Now, I've done research on it at the time. And again, uh, it shows what I've done to restore it and whatever. And uh, it tells you in a bit more detail about the knife. I think it's from the 30s or something. I'm not, I'm not, I'm guessing now. But it is one that I'll keep forever. It'll never leave. And hopefully my grandson, when he's 18, will appreciate getting something like that. That's a real heirloom, I think. Morning, John. How you doing? Now, so, we'll just, uh, anybody, any questions? Anybody else? Any fishing stories or bushcraft stories? Anybody was ever a bushcrafter before they became a knife person? ACDC, good morning. Oh, you're not late. This was just an impromptu one. Ever tried a Hulfords? Yes, the Hulfords is another great knife. It's it's along that Mora line. Um, I personally prefer Mora's because I think their edge got sharper for some reason. Um, but Hulfords are an absolutely great knife. I went through so many different bushcraft knives, the lighter versions of this. But I mean, this, I mean, like you can tell it was the old bushcrafter. I had my old tape wrapped around this. There's yards and yards of tape um, wrapped around the knife. And my, but I mean, I, I, I would swear by this, you know, if I was ever in a situation where I wanted a knife I could depend on, this is the boy that I reach for every time. Now, as far as small knife goes, the LT right, I I have never, I have never come across a better made knife. Look at the lovely white liners and all that. It is so small. You know, it's a really small. Let me just tell you what size it is. It is one, two, three, four, five. It's about five and a half inches long, and the blade length, the cutting edge is about two and a quarter, but it is so well made. I just love it. I think it's A2 steel, but beautifully made. And the wee pout house there. Lovely, lovely little knife. Anybody else got any LT right knives or any other knives that I should look out for? I mean, I love these little knives because I don't have the use for the big knives anymore. I don't bushcraft anymore. Although I would like to get back into, you know, just daily bushcraft. Going out for a stroll in the forest and taking a steak and cooking it. There's some really reasonably priced knives out there for the bushcraft, you know, that sort of outdoorsman. A lot of their prices don't go up into the silly figures that we tend to get in our pocket knives. 
I suppose that's because they're fixed blade. I, I take it fixed blades a lot cheaper to make than it is. Uh, although I'm I'm guessing. Isn't there a copy of a fixed blade bench made in AliExpress? I don't know. To be honest with you, I re very rarely look for fixed blades now. And um, like I said, I, I sort of don't use them anymore. But uh, I would I would have a look because the the bench made one's supposed to be really nice. Benchmade is getting copied an awful lot at the minute on AliExpress and they tend to go through little batches like that where they'll pick a company and they'll just copy them. And to be honest with you, I know I put them up on the channel and I know an awful lot of people wouldn't buy them. And, and that's fine, that's absolutely fine, but I've always done it as a channel, had budget knives and put them up. I mean, they're there to be bought. I mean, you don't have to buy them. And you don't have to like them, but they're there to be bought. I've always bought them. Um, so I'm not going to change now just because I just buy what I think that people want to see. So what else have I got? Now, what I've got here is two brother knives. And this is the one that I'm going to take down the caravan because this will be the knife I'll use the most. Now, I took the back off it because when I'm throwing this into a bag... I just throw it in the way it is. It's pretty well secured in there. And like these are for nothing. I'm gonna to have to oh these are for nothing. Um brother knives. I think this is about 30 quid. And it's I think it's D2. Yeah, it's D2. Look at that spine. What's that about four mil thick? But look at the tip. You really can do some work with this with a full scandy grind absolute gem of a knife my carter handle and I, I say i think it's under 30 quid on aliexpress beautiful grip look at the the excess there's plenty of room in that knife if you want to do anything the jimping is the most purposeful that you'll ever get i think the most purposeful you'll ever get it's the bigger of the two this is the one that i'd keep up at home and use for just going down the forest <clears throat> Again, it's another. This is just brown my carter handle. This one is in four forty C, which is absolutely. I haven't put much use in this at all, other than just a quick test. Is there a copy? When is there a slip joint? The slip joint has released now. They haven't sent me one yet, and I I sent them a wee message, but that's typical for China. Um, they're the only company that are sending me stuff at the minute. <laughs> um. But they haven't sent me one of them and I haven't gone ahead and bought one because sure as be damned, like the last time, if I go and buy one, one comes in the post the next day. But it looks quite nice. It's a Warncliff, which as you know is one of my favourite blades. I think it's £30 on AliExpress at the moment and it's like a a cream bone handle on it. It is nice looking and I, you know, if they don't send me, I'll probably buy it eventually. Chikara Puko. Do you know, I remember hearing about them. Well, that's, that's stonemason. That's lovely. There's great information there for somebody. Yeah, Hellier, they, they've just got so much, um, so much to choose from because we're making nice for the long. I see it now. I was looking for the same style as the lockback. No, no, it's a, it's a complete proper bone sort of traditional um, knife, Al. So this is the one I keep at home anyway. This, again, a nice heavy, good look. The, the stockness is, that's near about four mil as well. But in hand, I mean, I have a medium large hand. There's plenty of room there for another finger. There's no jimping on the back of this one. More to the size, it is only, it's got a three and a half inch cutting blade in that. I never mentioned the cut, I think this is four inch. Want to, yeah, this is a four inch cutting blade, which is why I want to take it down to the caravan with me because I'll use that outside more. This will be used around the house as well. It is such a solid knife. I look, I know it's only 440C and that's D2. You see, for a, a, a bushcraft knife or, or for any knife to break anything down, these two are absolutely top. I, I mean, I'm not going to put them above that because I've used that and I know it's, it works incredibly well. But these are solid, heavy-duty knives. They're, they're, they're not... When you get a sheath like that and that clip comes with it and all for under 30 quid, I, I'm sorry, I find that hard to believe. 
I find it hard to believe. The two brothers, absolutely, and this comes with a clip too. I just took it off for throwing in my bag. So I'd highly recommend them. That one's going to the caravan. So that's nearly, that's all my bushcraft sort of knives. I haven't got any other bushcraft knives, but what I would say is if you like going into the forest and you like uh, chopping up wood for a fire, I see if you've got one of these lying in your in your in your wife's cutlery drawer, take them to you try them. They are so good. Do you still have your address, Dave? Yes, I think I have your address, mate. Yep, um, I'll double check, but I'll send you a wee, uh, message if I haven't. Um. Would you like that bug out? All right. So you can let me know afterwards, Dave. There's no rush. We'll talk afterwards. So, there you go. That's my bushcraft collection. People don't tend to see it much on my fixed blade collection. Um, I don't talk too much in the channel. More because else. Um, more because I don't use them anymore. But I'll be starting because we've got the caravan again now and it's down there and it's we're right down on the beach and I want to go down and have wee fires with the grandchildren and do the old um, sausages on a stick cooking over a wee a firebox. What are Ganzo up to these days? Do you know, I've, I've gone off Ganzo, not gone off them as I have had plenty of them. They're not sort of changing, they're just doing these D2 flippers uh, and, and they're not changing at all. They've stopped doing the access lock, which is what I loved about Ganzo. Um, strange that. Now that it's legal, they're not using it. But uh, Ganzo, they've the, the, the brought out now a collaboration with somebody, and I thought it was an awful knife, all steel handles. It's sort of gone backwards for me. Yeah, the cleaver through woodwork, and it's absolutely cracking. <laughs> um, anybody else got any questions there? <laughs> What's next? Yeah. We'll get it sorted out later on today. I'll get I'll get hold of you somehow. Gans are probably making the fake benchmen these days. Do you want to know something? They probably are. They probably are. But you know what? My my discussion is that everybody uh, gets really mad when people are doing copies and whatever. Look, we come out of the blue. A few years ago, a lot of these big Chinese companies, they all came out of the blue. What the hell do people think they were doing before they became legitimate? I, I, you just don't all of a sudden end up with a huge big factory producing a huge big number of knives that are top quality. You know, out of, I mean, we knives are just a quality and react things like that. They're huge quality. And this has always been my argument in my head. I don't get involved too much in the, the channel, but what do the people think these, these companies done before they, they, they were successful like that? They were OEMs. They just made knockoff knives in China. I just believe that's the truth. That's what they've done before. But now because they're legitimate, people will not, you know, they look down their nose at somebody who's buying a clone. Well, I'm sorry, you don't have that right. If you're buying a Chinese knife from a big Chinese company like we... They were OEMs before they became this super brand and they made knockoffs. So in one way or another, the knockoffs got them where they are and now you're saying they're okay. That's my argument. I get a bit I get a bit uppity when people think that we just automatically started with a huge big factory and excellent uh, quality knives. That just didn't happen. I'm sorry, it just doesn't happen. You don't become an excellent knife maker overnight. It takes years upon years of learning a trade and getting tradesmen trained up to be able to do that. Anybody else have a thought of that? <laughs> Can you tell I get a bit passionate? <laughs> I get some really weird um, comeback. When I put a clone video up, I get all sorts of people saying, oh, you're taking people's jobs away. No, I'm not. And clones don't take jobs away. Somebody's going to buy a $20 knife because they want to use that knife. They were never going to buy a $200 knife in the first place. No. Oh, sorry. Yes, I have. And it was crap. Sorry, Jeff. Yes, I did try the clone of the Mannix. And the one that I got, which, you know, I can only tell you mine. I suppose that's the luck that you take when you're, um, 
when you're buying clones and you're buying copies, every now and then you're going to get a duffer. Good morning, Chuffy. How you doing? That's a great name, Chuffy. <laughs> Is there a story behind it, I wonder? Um, but that uh, when you're buying clones, sometimes you get... Look, I've had boxes full of dummies and I wouldn't even give them away to people because they were dangerous. i just throw them in the bin. Okay, Dave, good luck. Take care, man. I'll speak to you later. Um, by the way, Super Chats here, if anybody, I'm not going to say any more than that. It's just there. It's available if anybody wants to, to help out. It's more, you're more than welcome. Even high-end occasionally give duffers out. They do. But, I mean, clones you're bound to get more. And some of the clones, their whole batch is just bad. Um, but, I mean, that's the chance you take. And if you're on a budget... That is the Ah oh, William. Thank you so much. First bug out clones on its way from China. I agree with you about clones. Good. I mean that's clones. I I think it's a topic we should talk about. It's not. It's not a. It's not necessarily a bad topic. Don't forget them people in China who are mostly making the clones. I mean, them poor people need jobs as much as we need jobs. They're on a a a, a completely unfair scheme. They're getting paid a pittance for knocking out knives for. For us in the West, they can't even have them themselves. So, yeah, Chuffy, I love the clone topic because just got a Medford Praetorian clone, cheap way to understand. It's pretty ridiculous now. I mean, it's there you are. There's a Medford. I have a real Medford. Do you know what I mean? I have five pound knives. I have a real Medford. But because there's a clone Medford out there, that money's not coming out of Greg's pocket. But if you like it, there's a good chance you'll maybe eventually, like I done, Buy a Medford. Um, I have the Slim Midi. I'm not into the really big ones. I have a bug out, William. It's great cost 15. Yeah, I mean, th that bug out I had is one of the most dangerous knives <laughs> if you want for, for bluffing somebody. I know there was... I didn't go in and point out all the differences. That's not what this channel is for, is to, to point out... All the, what I'm saying is for somebody who'd never seen one and who that box arrived in their door that they'd bought off somebody on the internet would be filled for years until somebody else pointed it out. It was so well made. Everything about it was just, let me see, American. Around the world, get the stuff made in China because it's slave labour and it's cheap. But, but I mean, that's always going to be there. I don't believe we can change that unless everybody's going to stop buying cheap gear. And that's not going to happen. People on a budget need cheap gear. Oh, sorry, mate. Um, Rhino's only getting signed. Is everybody else getting a picture? Okay. Just let me know. My internet, I'm going to ask, ask to change it again because it's not great at these live feeds. Everybody else still there? Everybody got a picture? Hello? Sign a pick fine here. All good. Oh, it's good. Well, hopefully it's just a wee bit of weather. Chris, and how are you, Jay? Are you keep it well. You've been knocking out some videos recently. That's some knife collection you're picking up. Let's see if it's not moving. Can you wave? <laughs> Hello. Oh, William, I'm sorry, mate. It's frozen on you, has it? Survival lilies. No, um, again, this is just my old bushcraft stuff that, that I've still got left. Um, Survival Lilies now supposed to be really good. Never, never seen it, to be honest with you. I just think bushcraft knives, the way I used to treat them, I wouldn't spend a lot of money on them because, <laughs> hence I use a kitchen knife for chopping firewood. Um, these brother knives are so good. I wouldn't, you know, that's only 30 quid. But it's a four inch full tang D2, my carta handle for 30 quid. Jimping is excellent. Four inch blade. That's a proper bushcraft knife. I wouldn't spend the money more than 30 quid when I can get that. Morning, Asgard. How are you? John, jump by the window. <laughs> China didn't steal our lunch, we sent it to them. Oh, that is an absolute crack insane. Sam, I think that's the trouble. Once you get big, 
I used to get my ganzos and all free and they keep coming back to me and asking me to, you know, to want to get their knives from. And I don't, to be honest with you. Uh, I, that's why I started the likes of Super Chat and things like that. Just to try and get that extra wee bit of money that lets me buy knives. And then I'm not beholden to somebody. I can buy, um, not just cheap, because gosh, I bought Medford. So I can buy the copies and the clones that I know that there's a lot of people on my channel from the beginning are really interested in so that's why i don't affiliate with companies anymore because it's just it's more it's worth the hassle it's just so much hassle um that i i just find it's not worth it and i mean the numbers in the channel although it's great i'm over six thousand my goodness i can remember the days me waiting for 60 um but so my dog is scratching at something's gone mad there do you have any thoughts on swords? John, they're very big and sharp and, and they're very dangerous to give to young children. <laughs> but, um, I would love to have them on my walls. I love the look of them. And my son was an officer in the Royal Navy. He's just left. Um, I'm not sure why he'd probably keep a sword for his own room. But yes, swords are lovely, but they're not something, for one, I think they're too expensive for me to, the branch, all my money goes in knives. I don't have another hobby. <laughs> oh, you're back, right? Oh, well done. Too awkward to eat easy. <laughs> yeah, they, in Northern Ireland, they tend not to let you have swords. No, the police are quite strict on that. <laughs> Do you know, I could take this out and just hold this all day long. I love this. LT right. Just beautiful. And he's pretty reasonably priced too, LT Wright. Well, I think he is. Anybody else, especially Americans of you, I think he seems reasonably priced for what he's producing. My missing is only I switched to collecting now, smaller and less expensive. Yeah, I mean, it's just swords are sort of, if I added swords on, I think Sally would just tell, she'd just throw me out. Um... <clears throat> Easier to hide from, you mean, yeah, that's that's also, they sneak in the post very easily. Hello, so, so this is my hobby, so Sally's really good. As long as I'm not taking food off the table or I'm not decorating the house or doing something, <coughs> or I'm not not decorating the house, then she's really good. She lets me just fire away. She's quite happy, more than happy to do it. Um, anybody else have problems with their wives? I never hear that being said too much. <laughs> no, you're all gone quiet. Come on, give us a question. It doesn't have to be about fixed blades. I, I'm, I'm open to any, any, anything about any knives at all. I have all my boxers here. Just trying to think. No, I don't have any more knives. Yeah, you see any people around? No, they definitely do not. She's fine when she's a <laughs> And you probably should get armour to match, not just a lanyard, yeah. <laughs> yes. No, my, I, I'm, I'm quite lucky. My wife says what she means. And she'll not say it until then. <laughs> she, she, she doesn't threat. My wife never threatens. She just tells you when it's when it's time that you're going to change. <laughs> what did the LT cost? I don't know. These this is a gift, a lovely gift, along with this other little small one here. These are both gifts which I was over them in D's knives. Great channel too. Uh, he's one. If you go over to his channels, D's knives, he has the best collection of LT rights and a number of other um, knives. I may add that man has a huge collection of. Especially fixed blades, but he does all sorts. So I, I didn't even go and look up the price. I think that's a bit rude when you'd given a gift. I'm on the slingshot channel. No, I've never been on a slingshot channel, to be perfectly honest with you. I do have, uh, we call them a catapult. I have a couple of catapults here that I take out with the grandkids and we'll go in the woods and shoot cans and things like that. And down the caravan, we'll do it, we'll throw the can in the sea or whatever. On a piece of string, by the way, so I can pull it back in. And we'll do that with a plastic bottle too um, that floats out like a milk bottle and put a stick in it with a bit of string. And then we can pull it back in again. 
I get this thing here as you walk by and watching knife videos. I haven't bought it. <laughs> um, and I only watch the videos on the big TV if she's not there. I mean, she puts up with me. I have my phone in bed every night. And that's where I catch up on most of my watching of um, video channels. <coughs> Is it nighttime in bed? And uh, I don't wear earphones. I hate wearing earphones in bed. So she has to listen to it while she's reading her book. And she puts up with that just as long as I keep the volume down. <laughs> Wives are a funny creature. I'm only saying that now because my wife's gone back to bed for a wee land. <laughs> she got up this morning with a dog and then when I get up there, she went back for an hour or two. The joys of being retired. It's great. So would, uh, is everybody happy to have done a wee live video once a week? Uh, is it something you would like to see? I'll, I'll do them at different times so that people can join in. I quite like live video chats because I get to ask questions there and then. Oh, by the way, if you're in my Paddy's Parlour podcast group and if you had donated... Please watch tomorrow night. Um, big night tomorrow night. The first t-shirt gets given away tomorrow night. We have hit our target. So if you had donated to the Paddy's Parlour podcast uh, t-shirt, it is now, I'll show you the knife that we bought and I'll also do the drawing tomorrow night for the first t-shirt. Uh, will be will be not live tomorrow night, but it will be recorded tomorrow and then put up tomorrow night. So... That's quite exciting. I find that exciting. Um, looking forward to that. I haven't actually got the detail of the badge on the T-shirt yet. I have to go back tomorrow and see um, what the badge. This is my little dog. Oh, I can't even show you. I'm on the stand there. But he is yapping and moaning because he is my little lap dog. And if I'm not there, he gets very, <laughs> he's very needy. Um He's very needy. Since his big sister got went to sleep there just before Christmas, he has just become my lapdog. He will not leave my side. Um, I've always been a dog lover, but uh, this last two dogs I've had, we Bonnie got put down really... Uh, yes, he's a wee Yorkshire Terrier, and he's just uh, an absolute head the ball. He's about four and a half. We got him when he was three and a half, and... Uh, He'd been rejected three times and sent back to the puppy, the puppy kennels. And uh, he was just so needy when we got him. And it hasn't improved. He's the most loving little dog I've ever got. He's not even yappy. Most little Yorkshire Terriers are yappy barkers. He's not. He's the most loving little dog. I have to wear a plastic one in public here in France. I have to wear a plastic one here. What did I miss there? It's up back to the me. Cheerio, Jeff. Take care. I have to wear a plastic one in France. I have lost the plot. <laughs> Did I miss something there, Rhino? Why are you wearing plastic out in public? That's quite kinky. Oh, <laughs> I thought I thought there was another conversation going there. Just didn't quite sound like you. Well, there we go. Each to their own, yeah. Um, Reno, you just wear whatever you like. It's Ron, isn't it? Is it Ron? <laughs> right, folks. <laughs> John, do you know what it is? It's not too bad at all. Not a bad I life. Good. Well, we'll maybe do some more war ones. I'll just do them at different times because when you've got, I've got so many different time zones that my subs are in. I'm just going to sort of knock them out once a week and do them at different time zones so that I get to speak to all. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? You're very welcome. Well, you're very welcome for about another five minutes and then I'm going. <laughs> Carbide Caviar, you're more than welcome, sir. Very welcome to the channel. We were just having a, a chat about it. I'm trying to sort out my, my bushcraft knives or my sort of work knives that they are. No, I don't do much bushcrafting. After getting another hobby on our non traditional knives here in Norway, should something go for you? Uh, 
should. Something Grand Park could have used socially acceptable. Do you see as far as laws go on knives, I just think that this word Whenever I see these stabbings on the TV and whatever I um, hear about it, it just sort of turns to me. I think, there we go, there's more enemies. Most of them is done with a bread knife that somebody's lifted from a kitchen. There's very rare, in fact, I have never seen a £200 bench made in any clip of any stabbing that, that's out there. Do you know what I mean? Knives, are, it's like guns in America. Guns are not the problem. It's the people who are holding the guns or are holding the knife. That's the problem. That's the part of society we need to give help to, that they feel as if their only action is to carry and use a knife. The knife is not the problem. Why? I don't understand why governments have to blame something for a breakdown in society. It's just, it, it seems like the easy way out. And well, I'm talking about governments here. There's the easy way out is the, the answer, I suppose. Everything is an easy way out rather than face the problem. Exactly. A knife or a gun can't do anything unless somebody pulls a trigger or thrusts it forward. It's just craziness. And it really gets on my goat. As a, as a grumpy old man, that would be my one. I mean, over here in Northern Ireland, we can only carry a, a three inch maximum blade that's in a folding knife that's non-locking. But I can go to Tesco's and buy a 10-inch chef's knife and walk about with it. Well, not walk about with it. If I wanted to use it in a bad way, I just go and buy a 10-inch knife, walk out and do whatever I want to do. So what's the point of keeping a law where a 3-inch folding non-locking knife, I just... Absolute crazy. Sabal suggested a $200. Never happened. <laughs> Never happen. Absolutely never happen. Life's not like that. It'd be lovely to put this limit on everything, but not going to happen. Well, say that. Like, there's a Medford. My <clears throat> my biggest expense when I got money when my <clears throat> when my mum passed away last year. I had a wee bit of money, and I wanted to buy that really one-off knife that I'll never buy again. And I paid five hundred pound for a Medford. So if there was a two hundred pound limit. I wouldn't have been able to get that because Medford will not make them for £200. You know, so I wouldn't have got that knife that I absolutely love, by the way. The hype about his knives is all real. I think one terrorist was trying to attack with £100 cold steel. You know, look, I think governments are just, they, they just find everything easy to, to move off to something else so that they have to deflect from the, I mean, the mental health in most countries, the mental health funding is pathetic. And it's the mental health of the people that are doing these things is the problem. I mean, nobody, I never hear them relating back from knife to mental health. I mean, who in their right mind is going to go out and stab somebody or shoot somebody? You have to have something mentally wrong with you to do that. But if you can't get any help or you're being ignored when you're looking for help, you know, if somebody snaps, that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. It's too late then. It's getting people before they snap. Or am I being simplistic? This is quite political for me. Drug policy definitely doesn't work. The alcohol policy... I look, I'm a recovering alcoholic. Um, now... I'm 31 years sober now. I'm very proud of that time. Not proud of being an alcoholic, but I'm proud of being 31 years sober. But the help out there is dwindling. Even from when I was about, it's dwindling. The people going to AA meetings in our local town has dropped dramatically since I went, and yet the alcohol problems got worse. So something's not working along there. You know, something's not there. I mean, I was very, I think I was actually fortunate. I was locked up three times in mental institutions for alcohol abuse. And to get me off it, I couldn't get off it myself. Where now they won't allow you into a mental institution for help. Well, an alcohol unit, unless you stop drinking for 10 days or something. If I could have stopped drinking for 10 days, I wouldn't, I, <laughs> I would still be drinking now. Um, is my answer to that. That's the only thing I really know about is that the mental health side was, it seems that it was better when I got sober 30 years ago than what it is now. 
<laughs> oh, Joffy, it's uh, there's so many people go through that. I mean, I wish I'd have been one of the ones who got it first time. I didn't. I haven't done a night for a long time, and I have to say, AA for me saved the day for me. And they weren't going out and working, and they weren't doing that, and that's a bad way to be. Um, so I sort of parted company after about seven years. Now, I have taken people to meetings in the process, you know, people who wanted to go that I know friends, I'll take them to meetings or whatever, because it's the only answer I knew. It's the only answer I knew. But I just see it now. I actually went and uh, went down to the Bangor one a couple of years ago, and on a Saturday night, and there was about six people at it, and I'm going, what happened? It was starting room only when I was going, and yet the drinking problem is worse here. Tell me I should carry a knife as they claim it's. Sorry, let me just get that up again. Never felt the need to use on someone. Never will. No, I mean, a knife fight. They all you've got to just read reports. If you if you're in a knife fight, the chances are you're going to get stabbed. So what's the point of pulling a knife? I mean, I. I don't know. look. I can. Uh, yeah, look, I to be honest, Reno, I started this about uh, six months ago. I was seven years off the cigarettes, and I started this about six months ago, and I'm enjoying it, to be honest with you. Not that I'm recommending it. It's just for me, it was either go back on the cigarettes or find something else. So I find something else because I don't want to go back to cigarettes. Thanks, William. Yeah, that may, and look, Rough Riders are a great wee knife, and that VG-10 is so well heat-treated. It was sharp as a razor after 150 cuts. Uh, and Rough Riders 440A, it's an absolutely cracking little steel. <coughs> Obviously, it depends what you're doing, but isn't that the same with every knife that we have and hold or take? We take the knife for the purpose. Rough Riders, if you're just a, an average user, a Rough Rider stockman will get you through any day. Absolutely, 440A is fine. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, each to their own, each different. To me, it's helped, I have to say. I didn't smoke again, so... Um, oh, there's my good lady up out of bed. She didn't stay long. She must have missed me. Oh, dear. She's got that face. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I don't want, ever want to smoke again. I feel so much more healthy since I stopped, I have to say. But I have been enjoying the wee vape. But I'm not recommending it. It's just I have enjoyed it. It worked for me. Thank you very, very much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, it all goes towards knives. Do you find it makes you wheezy? No, not yet. Not yet. Wait, did I sound wheezy there? I've got a bit of an ear infection at the minute. So if I sound a wee bit odd, it's more for the ear infection. I've had it for nearly two weeks now and it's doing my head in. I think I got a wee bit of a cough at one stage, but I think it depends on what you're using. Um, but if it did get like that, I would just stop again, to be honest with you. And definitely, it's not it's not as addictive as cigarettes, that's for sure. Now, there we go. Look, thank you so much. Because we went for 40 years to be vaping. That's brilliant. And me and my wife are both off them now. Sally has always vaped, so... Um, it's just great to be off them and free of them. I hate being addicted to anything except my knives. <laughs> I don't mind this addiction. This is my nice little addiction. Look, thank you so much for sharing an hour of my day today. You have made it special. And a cup of tea. Definitely, Teddy, you have to have a cup of tea. Oh, who, who was I sending tea bags to? I don't know why he was on here. But they're in the post to you anyway. They were in the post last week. Uh, your tea bags are on the way. Take care, folks. I'm going to head on now. Thank you so much for joining in. Really enjoyed your company. Um, thanks very much, Al. Yeah, I'm over the moon with that. How's your throat? Are you getting any better? <laughs> Cheers, William, Chris, Joffe. Thank you very much indeed. I'll see you shortly on another day and another time. Take care. Bye-bye now. Bye.